praise the Lord. What a delightful evening. Thank you, my sons. Thank you for the joy. Thank you. This one of a kind experiment in human activity. Thank you, Lord, for life, health, strength, great challenges. Reverend Mark Whitlock will share this portion with me. He will come up at the end and do a PowerPoint presentation on the theme of the evening and then the theme of the event. He and I are both awed. I'm reminded of that little girl who complains to her mother of a stomach ache. Darling, that's because your stomach is empty. You'll feel better when you get something in it. That evening, the pastor comes to visit the family. And in the course of events, he complains of a splitting headache. Yes, you know children. Pastor, that's because your head is empty. You'll feel better when you get something in it. All of us have a headache. As we look at the general theme this body has set for itself, building communities. Oh, that's, that builds a headache, building communities. Then the sub-question, what are we going to do about it? We who? We God's firebrands. We God's firebrands. You remember the pastor who comes complaining to John Wesley that he's not growing. Things are not working for him. What, what am I going to do? And John Wesley looks at him and says, catch on fire and somebody will come out to watch you burn. Catch on fire. Dream big. Hunt your neighbor in the ribs and tell them dream big. Dream big. Dream big. Dream big. And of course, the best way to make your dreams come true is to wake up. To shape up, to lift up, to grow up, to dream big. And as we dream, we're going to look at Paul in Acts 17. You Bible students know that Paul and Timothy and Silas and Luke have been cast out of city after city for preaching good. If you would ask Paul, Paul, how you doing? Paul would answer, giving heaven and catching hell. That's what you and I are doing now. How you doing, guys? Giving heaven and catching hell. Acts 17, 6. It is said of these men, Paul and Silas, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Then at the end of the chapter, chapter 17, verse 34, but a few joined them and became believers. A few joined them. What are we going to do about it? It only takes a few. That's going to be our subject for a little while. We who, it only takes a few. We you, it only takes a few. You veterans have observed that it only takes a few to disturb the church. That's the first thing we're going to look at. It only takes a few to disturb the church. We church folks are always fighting. Say amen. We'll fight about anything. And then when there's nothing to fight about, we'll fight about that. We religious people just love to fight. In the last 4,000 years of history, less than 300 years of peace. 
We just love to use that energy God has given us to combat one another. Lord, have mercy. You remember this fight in the local church and the presiding elder, middle management, comes to settle it. He addresses them, I'm surprised at you. I'm ashamed of you calling your pastor, a, for want of a better term, a jackass. How could you do that? You were Christians. How could you call your pastor a jackass? One old warrior stands up in the back and she says, Mr. Bizzardinella, I ain't worried about who called the preacher a jackass. I'm trying to figure out who called that jackass a preacher. For every meeting, there are at least two meetings, the one in the meeting hall and the one on the parking lot, which follows the meeting on the telephone. Oh, my Lord, and yet in the church we call each other brother and sister, Brother Smith, Sister Mary, Brother Bill, Sister Canetta, we call each other. And you know, we act like brothers and sisters with sibling rivalry, with sibling religious rivalry. I remember when the three of us were children, my dad cautioned my sister, Louise, Louise, don't disturb your brother, Edward. To which she replied, Daddy, I can't disturb him. He's already disturbed. Oh, how we love to disturb each other. And it only takes a few. When we are after nonsense, when it's show time, when it's show off time, it only takes a few. But when it's show enough time, when it's time to answer the question, what are we going to do about it? We act as if it takes Bulldog drumming, Hallelujah Sally, Spider-Man, Scooby-Doo, and the heavenly host of angels that it takes all of us to get it done. It only takes a few. What if we use that energy to work with each other rather than to work against each other? What if we use that creative energy to create something out of nothing? What if we use that energy to take a negative and to turn it into a positive? What if we use that energy we use in fisticuffs to use in friendliness and embracing each other? You remember Admiral Nelson before the Battle of Trafalgar, one of the historic moments to be recalled. He learns that two of his admirals are quarreling. They don't even speak to each other. He said, oh, no, 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 no. So he sends for them. And when he calls them, he takes one's hand and the other's hand, put them in each other, and then turning, he says, Yonder are the enemy. Yonder are the enemy. Well, you and I are not mustered by General Nelson, but by general necessity. You and I are now forced to join together whether we want to love each other or not. We're going to have to find a way to love each other. And if we don't want to love each other, we're going to have to ask in the words of that song, what's love got to do with it? We're going to have to learn to like each other if we don't love each other. And if we just muster together the care packages, we'd have a community of care. If we would all come together, together just in some type of consensus that under the skin all people are kin. Red and yellow, black or white, all are precious in God's sight. If we would just come together, America is 75 percent white. California is 50 percent white. 
Seven years ago, it was 57% white. In 2020, California and America will be 30% blacks and browns. In the year 2050, America will be 50% blacks and browns. We're going to have to figure out a formula, children of God, to walk together. We're going to have to do like that husband and wife did when they are feuding. We may not be having much going on in the bedroom, but we sure better get something going in the kitchen or we're going to die of starvation. <laughs> Yonder are the enemy. 30 million Americans go to bed hungry every night. 3 million Americans on substance abuse. 12 to 18 million Americans on alcohol. Three million Americans homeless. You saw a bit of the sights there. Half of these, five, excuse me, 500,000 of these being women and children. How can the most powerful nation on the planet, the richest nation on the planet, have women and children sleeping on the streets? How can we take people who have mental illness and let them sleep on cardboard houses? Yonder are the enemy. Take the 1,000 corporations, top corporations in America, in the level of vice president and above, 97% of these executives are white males. And in the remaining 3%, 50% of those are white females put there by affirmative action. Yonder are the enemy. A white young adult male, a black young adult male, go to the same college, get the same degree, and go out into society. The black man has less than a 50% chance of earning $60,000 a year. What are we going to do about it? We who? It only takes a few. Only takes a few to disturb the church. Secondly, it only takes a few to disturb the peace. I don't know if you agree, but most of us need our peace disturbed. Jesus says, I have not come to bring peace, but what? A sword. This is a sword that will prick the conscience. This is a sword that will prick the consciousness. This is not a sword that will draw blood, but a soul that will draw us out of us. This is a sword that will draw us out of consensus. It only took a few to stand before the most powerful man on the planet and say, sir, we don't agree with you that war should be the first election. We think we should go through the United Nations organization and we should climb every mountain, ford every stream to find a way to solve these problems. We can go into Iraq. We've got to remove these biochemical problems. We've got to move the nuclear possibilities, but we've got to use war as a last resort. It only takes a few to disturb the peace, but everything depends on whether you want prophecy or not. Everything depends on whether you want to be prophetic or pathetic. Some of us in the religious kingdom are pathetic. Just maintaining the course. Just maintaining the course. Remember this taxi driver who goes to heaven and this preacher who goes to heaven and St. Peter meets them at the gate, brings in the taxi driver, gives him a silken garment and gives him a golden staff. When the preacher comes in, he gives him a cloth garment and a wooden staff. Peter, why the discrepancy? This doesn't seem fair. Why did he get the first class treatment 
and I got the no class treatment. Well, up here we go only by results. While you preached, people slept. But while he drove, people prayed. <laughs> Lord, please don't let this fool kill me. Please, Lord. That cab driver broke every one of the commandments except the 11th commandment. You know what the 11th commandment is? Thou shall not bore people. Thou shall not bore people. You can say many things about Jesus, but you can never say Jesus bored people. With Jesus, it was three yards and a cloud of dust. Jesus drove out the wicked people in the temple, and then they drove Jesus not only out of the temple, but out of town, three yards and a cloud of dust. So Paul, Timothy, Silas, Luke, you are in good company. You're in the company of Jesus if they drive you out. You're in the company of Jesus if they say you are in the minority. And you say, yeah, but I'm not in the silent minority. When I get to heaven, God's going to sure have to dust me off because I'm going to raise a little dust while I'm here on earth. I'm not looking to be the president of anybody's fan club. I'm looking to serve the Lord. I'm looking to do something about it. I've been cast out of a cornium. I've been cast out of Lystra. I've been cast out of Berea. I've been cast out of Philippi. And now they come to Athens. Paul, Silas, Timothy, they come to Athens. A few believe, say the scripture. We can always have that few believe. A few disbelieve. We can always have that few that disbelieve, but the vast majority doubt it. That's that negative situation God gives you and me. That vast majority that doubt, and that negative minority that are determined to have their way. That's that negative situation. But look what God does to God's care packages. Look how God can feed those who catch on fire. God takes a negative, the cross beam of the cross, and a vertical intrusion from above, God turns it into a positive. God takes a negative and makes it a positive. We are facing a negative today. You look at these handsome lads of God. American black males, adult black males, are 3% of the American population, and yet 50% of the prison population. But don't stop there. 80% of them going there are going because of substance abuse crimes, not violent crimes. And don't stop there. The Federal Judicial Council out of Washington, D.C., the sentencing project out of Washington, D.C., tell us that for a white man using powder cocaine to get the same sentence as a black man using crack cocaine, and the two are essentially the same. If anyone is weaker, it's crack cocaine watered down with hot water and baking soda. But the white man must use a hundred times as much powder cocaine as the black man uses crack cocaine to get the same sentence. Ain't that something? And blacks get a 49% higher sentencing for the same crimes that's white. What are we, what are we going to do about it? It only takes a few. In that city of Athens, they recruited Dionysius, brilliant man, college professor, one of 30 intellectuals in Athens. A big shot. Dionysius, a big shot. The other person they recruited was Damaris. She was a street woman. You could tell she was a street woman because she was in the marketplace and women were not allowed in the marketplace. The word means heifer, damaris, 
means heifer. So here you got a big shot and a little shot. Like some of us here tonight. Most of us standing before the grace of God would just say, I'm not much to look at. I ain't much to see, but I got a God who's crazy about me. He's funny that way. Because you know what a big shot is? A big shot ain't nothing but a little shot that keeps on shooting. What are we going to do about it? We who? It only takes a few. Well, we said it only takes a few to disturb the church. Now we say it only takes a few to disturb the peace. Let's conclude that it only takes a few to disturb the world. For God so loved the world that God sent someone to disturb the world. And that someone sent us Paul and Timothy, Silas, Barnabas, and Luke, and Abraham, Joshua, Heichel, and, and Martin Luther King. And Martin Luther King has said to you and me tonight, the salvation of the world belongs to the maladjusted. Oh, Martin, it wouldn't mean anything if you didn't pray for it with your life. It wouldn't mean anything if you hadn't set aside the safety of a college teaching position in the Northeast and risked your life and died and died. Jesus, you could have stayed in the carpenter's shop and you could have done where you had it coming. You help raise your brothers and sisters and all. Oh, it doesn't mean much. But you choose to get out of step. The salvation of the world belongs to the maladjusted. You remember the soldiers marching down the street and this proud mother, this country woman, oh look, here come the soldier boys. And look, there's my son. And look, he's the only one in step. Sometimes being in step with the crowd is being out of step with God. And all times being in step with God means being out of step with the crowd. But the decision is yours and mine to be careful, to be carefree, or to be careless. Then if you are careful, you're full of God. And God will take care of you. Paul, Silas, these two who have turned the world upside down have come here also. This organization that has turned the nation upside down has come to Los Angeles also. And out of that college professor and out of that street heifer, Athens becomes the greatest city in the Greek church. Oh, it only means that you need to catch on fire. You catch on fire, somebody will come out to watch you burn. So the only question is not we who. The question is, does anybody here have a match? Does anybody here have a match? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine in the name of Jesus.